Massive Audio have been creating car audio products since 1999. They have built a reputable name for themselves with subwoofer series such as the Hippo and Sumo lineup. Today I am very excited to have a member of the Hippo series to review and give you guys an honest opinion on its build quality and its performance. Massive Audio was first requested on this channel back in June of this year and I was able to pick up a Hippo XL12 over at Amazon for about 350 bucks. For your money, Massive Audio provides a non-pressed paper cone reinforced with Kevlar fiber, color-coded direct leads to assist with power delivery, and at nearly 50 pounds, the Hippo XL12 has a 350 ounce strontium magnet. The 3 inch black aluminum voice coil is protected by a woven fiberglass dust cap and his red Nomex spiders are complemented by dual red stitching for a tall rubber surround. And I also think that it is worth noting that the Hippo XL12 is the most powerful 12 inch subwoofer that I've featured this year. Coming in at 2000 watts RMS, it has a 4000 watt peak rating pretty impressive doing those burp applications. The Hippo XL12 has a cast aluminum basket and it is finished with an industrial textured look which gives it a look of a heavy duty product. The rear of the magnet is a total of nine vents with the center pole vent measuring over an inch and a half in diameter. This provides plenty of airflow to keep things cool during high SPL performances. The 350 ounce magnet is protected by a custom tooled rubber boot which houses two massive strontium magnets. If you are enjoying this video and would like to learn a little bit more about how to simplify car audio, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. The enclosure I decided to build for this subwoofer comes in at 19 and 3 quarter inches in width. 17 and a half inches in height and 19 and three quarter inch in depth. After bracing and subwoofer displacement, this gives a total of two cubic foot with a port tuning of 30 hertz. Now I do understand that this is not an optimal port tuning for a subwoofer with an FS of 46 hertz, but personally, I like music with a lower frequency tuning and decided against the recommended 55 hertz tuning frequency. And as you guys will see, I later on regretted this during the testing in the trunk of the Impala. Two more clicks. Get stuck. 
Go back to subtest. I actually decided to give the base sweep a second go because I was a bit disappointed in the first run of this. I know that I had my game set properly. However, I did not get the response from this subwoofer that I thought that I would get. And to be honest with you guys, off camera, I actually pumped the power a little bit more just to see if it was my amplifier application that was having issues. And to be honest with you, it did smoke a little bit. But it did survive to go on and do musical tests, and it does not seem to hurt the overall performance of it. During the music test of this, the Hippo XL12 performed exactly as I expected it to. It did exceptionally well with frequencies above 40 Hz and suffered equally with frequencies below 35 Hz. In short, if you are expecting this subwoofer to perform at frequencies below 35 Hz, it may require an extensive break-in period. Either that or just avoid the purchase altogether. Right now what we are going to do is hop on over to Massive Audio's website to clarify a few things for you guys. Okay, so right now we're over here at the user manual or user guide for the Massive Audio Hippo XL series. Um, over here, they you know they got, they give you all your your parameters for all the DIY guys who love to build their own enclosures or who just like to get everything, uh, all the information that is required to get a custom box built for their driver. Now, what we're looking at right here. This is for the, the Hippo 8s and 6s, so we don't we don't want these guys. Okay, so the 6.5 and, and the 8 is not what we have purchased. We have actually purchased the 12. So we're going to scroll down, down here where we get the information about the 12 and subwoofer, which is what we are looking at right here. Now, let me get a, a zoom in on this for you guys so you can see exactly what it is that I'm talking about right here. Now, on the, in this user guide right here, follow this column right here okay because I don't have I do have the Hippo XL 12 but not the 4 ohm version I have the 2 ohm version the Hippo XL 12 2 or 122 if you come down here and you look at the SPL right look at the SPL rating for that subwoofer you follow that over you guys see right here in the user guide that it says it's only at 86 okay 86. So why is it over here on this website, right? Over here on this website, when you go to description, they tell you over here this thing has an SPL rating of 95.99 dB. That's almost 96 decibels per what I thought was one watt and one meter. But in actuality, the way that they're actually rating it now is the SPL is at 2.83 volts and one meter. This is very inconsistent. You know, you, you kind of see this <laughs> sometimes with, with certain companies, you see this type of inconsistencies or discrepancies between the, uh, the provided user guide and what they actually have posted here on the website. This isn't the only thing that I actually found wrong with the, uh, the listing here. This thing actually tell you that it has a uh, heavy duty direct input wire connection to it's just worded so weird to me i come up here and i see that same information up here and it tells you that this is actually look at this it's actually a hardwired pure 10 gauge copper speaker wire you understand i don't think to be honest with you that this is even 10 gauge wire you know i don't i don't really think that and i got i do have a upcoming video where I actually uh, compare this to a subwoofer from American Base, the XFL 12, which have true 10 gauge wire attached to it, direct leads. And this doesn't hold a candle to those wires. And I'm, I give you a side by side comparison of that. And once again, this is not me trying to dump on American, I mean, on Massive Audio as a company. This is just me bringing you the information of a subwoofer that you requested that I check out. Okay, so just keep all that in mind. 
Another thing that I notice as well is when they come down here, later on they're going to give you box dimensions for this subwoofer. And I know a lot of you guys have told me that this is a subwoofer that smashed the lows. That's what you guys told me, that it, that it smashes the lows. However, this subwoofer has a recommended tuning for the... Let me, let me get the uh, zoom on this. It has a recommended tuning for a single ported application, which is what I have built for you guys. Um, right here it says for the Hippo uh, XL12 2 on the small side, right? You are recommended at 1.39 cubic foot. Okay? 1.39 cubic foot. And over here on the largest side, it doesn't go up much. It's 1.84 cubic foot. So they are recommending that you put this in an enclosure that is smaller than cube two cubic foot, and which is what I have built. Um, also, another thing that that caught my attention is look at this and this also started to make sense to me during testing this thing has a, a tuning way up high man this is way up high 55 and 50 this is strictly to me a um for spl competitions like for birth applications at these higher frequencies this is not meant in my opinion to slam the lows now can it slam the lows if you build a proper box and tune it yeah you know i can get it to to hit the lows but but it's power rating and some of the specs of it's you know uh electrical suspension I, I would i did expect a whole lot more than this and it made sense for me when i met when i ran my spl um, um testing of this which i'm going to show you guys in an upcoming video it, it, it needed a very high frequency. It needed a frequency of, of around 46 hertz to even meter properly. So this explains all of that. So uh, once again, you know, you guys asked me to come in here and, and uh, test these subs out for you, feature them here on the channel. And I'm just being 100% honest with you guys to say that this is not a subwoofer to me that was meant to slam lows. This thing has an FS of 44 hertz and it's, it, it, it isn't meant in my opinion to be some low frequency beast this is an SPL subwoofer this thing was meant to get loud at around its, its resonant frequency which is around you know the mid to upper 40s in my opinion so that's my take on that please guys disregard that this is not true in my opinion at all um and there was a few other nuances that I didn't, you know, that, that kind of irked me about the subwoofer. But like I said, I'm not here to dump on the company. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison and bring it to you guys the way that I think it needs to be brought to you. I do have a, um, a up and upcoming video, and I'm going to be comparing this to two other subwoofers that I have in my arsenal. That being one of the American Base XFL 12. I'm going to use it as a reference subwoofer. Despite it being 500 watts less RMS rating, it's a 1500 watt RMS rated subwoofer, but I think it's a lot more than that. And I also have another subwoofer, which is the Toro Force 12S by the uh, company Toro Tech. That's another one that you guys uh, suggested that I get, and I do have that coming as well. So please stay tuned, guys. I have that and more. And as always, if you felt like you got some value, out of this video please don't forget to like the video it really helps me out a whole lot and subscribe and share the video with anyone who you think may also get some value out of it till next time it's your boy d and i'm out